Guys, welcome to Hadi Arabia. This is episode 14. It's been 10 months of me doing the show. And tonight I have a special guest that I've never met before the interview. However, I have voted for him twice. <laughs> His name is Qais Zayadeen. The energy that this guy has. This guy is a lawyer by trade, but in 2016, he ran on a social justice platform here in Amman, Jordan, representing my district. Uh, so after all my interviews, I record these introductions while I'm editing. And this interview with Qais got me thinking about why I do this show. Why did I start Howdy Arabia? I do this show because I am passionate about certain issues. Sometimes it's business, sometimes it's technology, sometimes it's mental health, sometimes it's politics. This is honestly the first political guest I have on. And he's a controversial character. I voted for this guy four years ago because his platform, Man, is a progressive one. And here in Jordan, <laughs> let's just say there are very few liberal progressive platforms. And in the Arab world, voting in itself is not a common thing. Voting for liberals and social justice activists is also rare. And voting for someone who's not in it for benefits is also rare. So this, this is a unique character. In his four years in parliament, he was loud. He was abrasive. He was an attack dog. He would fight for Palestinian rights. He would call out corruption. He would fight with Islamists. A lot of people hated him, but he's in it for social justice. Unlike the vast majority of not just MPs here in Jordan, but politicians across the whole Arab world. This guy's still in his 30s. He lost his re-election in November. Is he gonna make a comeback? Are secularism, liberalism dead? Enjoy the interview and let me know what you think. Qais, Skeifak. Tamam. Habibi, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for agreeing to speak in English today. Qais, you're the uh, part of the last Jordanian parliament in the Hashma Kingdom of Jordan. How did you jump into the pool of uh, candidates for uh, parliament? Being a corporate lawyer, a commercial lawyer for many years with prominent law firms, how did you jump into this uh, career of politics? Well, I do come from a political family. My grandfather headed the uh, Communist Party in Jordan for a very long while. We're originally from south of Jordan, uh, Karak. And uh, my grandfather in 1956 ran for the elections in, uh, uh, for the Jordanian parliament uh, in Jerusalem. And actually, he won a seat there. Uh, that was a parliament uh, that went on for probably six months, maybe at that time. It was uh, the government of Sliman and Nabilsi, if you remember. Yeah. It's part of the Jordanian history. So I was uh, born and bred in a political family. I've always uh, felt the urge and the uh, need to build my country. So I studied in England. I did my law degree in England. Uh, and then I came back to Jordan. I started my career as a lawyer, as a corporate commercial lawyer. And then at one point in time, um, I looked around and I said, well, uh, Jordan has to be built and it has to be built uh, correctly. And we have as the younger generation to be part of this uh, whole political process in order to build the Jordan we want for us and for our children. And uh, I've always said that during the elections, we want to reach to a modern Jordan. And when I say a modern Jordan, I say a country that is built on the rule of law, citizenship, equality, quality in job opportunities, whereby men and women are equal, regardless of your origin, regardless of your religion, regardless of your sex. We are all Jordanians. We all carry the Jordanian passport, then we are all Jordanians. And this is the essence of building any country. What I noticed in the recent 10 to 20 years, maybe, that the younger generation is, is moving away from politics. Uh, they're moving away from Jordan itself. They go out abroad, they study. Many of them remain abroad. Many of them go to other countries and work in, in, in other countries. And I thought, well, this is something that these are people that have to be here in Jordan and build Jordan here and build their country for their children and their grandchildren after them. Because 
I, as a person, I don't have any other passports. I'm a Jordanian. Uh, my son is as well, so we, we have no other place to go to. And therefore, I felt this obligation towards my family, towards the people of Jordan, that, well, we have to. We have to uh, get the youth to get more involved in politics. And when you talk about politics, uh, Imad, it's not only for you to be a politician. To have, for example, a political party, then you can have experts on environment, you can have experts on health, you can have experts on every sector. And therefore, you can actually help your country and build actual programs for your country through something called the political party, which is everywhere in the, in the world. Yani, uh, Jordan, we're still in the beginnings, but uh, I think the political slash party life has to be uh, moved forward. Why? Because this is the normal platform for the young generation to feel involved in making their future. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. When you look everywhere in the world, it's political parties. They govern. These political parties, it's a big machine. So this machine produces programs. When you work in big groups, when you put in the collective mind of human beings together, then the end product is definitely better. And therefore, when I used to speak to the youth, and some of them, a lot of them used to say, well, we'll vote for you, for example, but we're not into politics. Fine. It's not you that have to actually be into politics and go up and, and go into the parliament or etc. But you can be the machine moving forward, the Jordan, your party, your ideas, etc. through this platform. And this is what we always believed in, yeah. that using such a platform... Is very important, which is a political party. Yeah. And so you were saying uh, that you you represented Qaim at Ma'an in the last two elections, uh, among other candidates. Uh, so Ma'an, it's a list. But is it a political party in the mature sense? Look, the whole trip started in 2016. This is where the first shock wave came. We've always had taboos in Jordanian politics that you cannot uh, cross. When Ma'an came in 2016, it broke a taboo that I think was uh, a lot of people believed in it, but no one wanted to actually talk about it openly. We came and we said, we want a civil state. We want a civil state democracy. What does that mean? When you look at the West, all the countries are actually civil states and political parties, they uh, shift in governments. The, the party that gets more votes is in, less is less, etc. So we said, no, we want a civil state, which is based on three things. مواطني عدالي وأمان اجتماعي citizenship equality and a safety net for, for everyone in the country and when we talk about a safety net we say when it comes to education transportation health etc and the thing that broke the taboo is when we had and I remember that period very clearly is when we had this uh, thing in the streets you know how in Jordan the elections are you have this uh, you put your pictures or the name of yeah. the list and we had this thing in the streets that said separate religion from politics. So we had one arrow aiming for one direction saying this is religion and the other in the other direction saying this is politics. And the reason why we believed in that is that politics is not very clean. While religion, it's, it's pure, it's, it's uh, sacred. You cannot mix both. And because we, have, we had the Islamic Brotherhood in Jordan growing stronger and stronger, and, and they were the main ones that actually used religion in politics. And we said, no, we have to stop. This is not the way forward. And this was a breaking point. And I remember clearly, Imad, at that point, everyone was saying to me, man, you're crazy. You're going to get 300 votes. Yani, but what are you doing? And I was like, wait, let's see. This pre-perception about Jordanians that we are uh, uh, do not accept anything new and we do not want a modern Jordan and that uh, the tribe is everything for us. This, I was like, let's test it. Let's see. And we ended up getting the highest votes in Amman District 3 in 2016 under the name of Ma'an. Two MPs went into the parliament, Khaled Ramadan and myself. And we worked four years. Uh, four years, maybe a lot of people say, well, what, you, what did you do? Where's the civil state? This, these were a lot of questions that I was being faced with in this election. That, uh, fine, we voted. Where's the civil state? So I started explaining, this is a long path. This is not something that you yani, uh, you get in four years or two years. This might take 10, 20, 30 years. This is a long road, and it's not an easy road to reach towards the end. Why? Because when you talk about equality, when you talk about a civil state, there's two main political currents, if I can say, that are directly uh, disadvantaged 
of such a thing moved forward, the civil state in the sense of the civil state. The first is what I call Tayarat al-Islam al-Siyasi, like the Islamic Brotherhood. So they use religion in politics and they use religion to uh, affect people and to gain political stands on ground. And, and that's wrong. And this current saw a danger in uh, uh, maybe people like us talking about a civil state and, and to separate religion from politics. The others were what I call the status quo forces. These status quo forces benefit from the current status. So mm. Wasta, Mahsubiya, he's a minister, his father was a minister, therefore his son is going to be a minister and probably his grandson will be a minister. They're the ones that take, for example, the educational uh, grants to go abroad so they can choose who, who takes it. These people benefit from not having to fully establish rule of law. Mm -hmm. Yani, and the wasta, for example, etc. So this current was also disadvantaged with what we say. So we started at a disadvantage immediately from the beginning. We started from a defense mode position, not from an yeah. attacking mode position. And that was our problem. We were immediately called infidels, kuffar, uh, westernized. They took everything about the civil state. A lot of them just had it that we are the people that want these weird parties to take place in Jordan. And we were like, this is part of the personal freedom, mm -hmm. as long as you're under the law. But this is not the this is not everything about the civil state. It's not just yeah. But uh, the most prominent thing became that it's anti-religion, even though it's not anti-religious. It's not. But it, by de facto, it was easy to pigeonhole it as anti-religion uh, and anti-tribal. Anti-tribal, basically. Yeah. Why? Because the tribes thought that a lot of people tried to play that game. It is anti-tribal in, in a sense. Why not? Why? Why? Why wouldn't you? I, I tell you why, because once I was with a number of the youth down south in Tafile, and one of them asked me the question, and they were like, the civil state is against tribes. And I was like, no, you know why? And I was very blunt with him, and I asked him the following question. I was like, 40 years ago, your tribe, how many of you? The number. And he was like 300, 400. I was like, good. So at that point, 30 years ago, when the government or the state comes and picks one of you to become an MP, the other to become a minister, the other to become judge. Uh, a judge, whatever, I give you some educational grants, etc. So the whole 600 are fine. How many of you are today, 30 years down the road? He was like 5,000. I was like, perfect. So within the actual tribe, is there a part that's considered the elite and a part that is considered less elite? And he was like, yes. I was like, is there a part that gets the educational grants and a part that does not get the educational grants? A part that always from them you get the minister, the judges, the MPs, etc. And the less elite part that is non-existent? And he was like, yes. I was like, the civil state calls for equality for you even within your own tribe. Because tribalism becomes classism at some point. Exactly. And the civil state... Along with, ironically, the so-called Islamic parties, they claim to transcend classism. This is what the appeal of some Islamic parties. But you're right. This is a great way to convince voters that, guys, this is not anti-tribalism. Yes, there are people who benefit from status quo tribalism. They're the elite. Exactly. But if you're part of that elite, <laughs> obviously, Fine, of you're, course, you're gonna obviously fight. you might actually... And that elite was the elite who started pointing out at us that we are not only non-religious, but as well we're anti tribes because they want to keep their elite uh, position. We're not against tribes. This is part of our Jordanian nature. This is something that we are proud of. Take the positives of such a heritage mm. and put aside the negatives. There is time for us to move forward. We cannot now look at our governments. When you appoint a government, I know I'm sure I shouldn't say that, but خلاص, يعني, now we, 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 can, uh, we can talk freely. You cannot put a government and you always look, well, I have one from Karak, uh, okay, um, Tafili, okay, I have uh, uh, originally Palestinian, I, I have a Christian, I have a Sarkid. You cannot do that anymore. This is turning us into Lebanon. <laughs> if you want to move forward, I don't care, even if, if the whole cabinet was from the same place or the same tribe or the same class or whatever, as long as they are qualified to do their jobs properly. Yeah. This is the essence of it. Yeah, the ideal is to remove identity politics from the meritocracy system. Exactly. So that there's no more administrative corruption, the right person for the right job. And this, again, always disadvantages elites who, who always and, benefit. You know, the whole civil state issue is in line with His Majesty's explanatory notes. The fifth explanatory note 
talked about having two to three political parties in Jordan. These political parties, they run with real programs into elections. The majority that wins in the parliament forms a government. Yeah. This is the fifth explanatory note. The sixth explanatory note was called the civil state, al al-Madani. And we are using these as a, as a, these explanatory notes as, as a roadmap for us. Even now, even if we had a setback in elections for a multiple of reasons, but still, that doesn't mean we don't stop because we are defending a modern Jordan. We want a modern Jordan for us, for our children. And a modern Jordan will only be established with certain principles of the civil state to be in place, respected, and move forward. Namely, mm -hmm. rule of law. Second, muatani, citizenship. I don't know exactly the term in English. Third, equality between everyone. Uh, fourth, personal freedoms, freedoms, freedoms of expression, freedom for the media. It's, we don't say that we will get there immediately. It will take us a while. Democracy has to be fed since when you're in maybe KG1 or KG2 or first grade. You have to start from there. Therefore, we have to change our curriculums. We have to push them forward. And I think the main thing that is pushing our community a bit towards extremism in a lot of issues, when you watch Facebook sometimes and you, you see there's, a, there's extremism and you think and you sit back and you say, why? Where did it come from? It's time for us to change the curriculums. We gave this, these curriculums from 1970 until today to the Islamic Brotherhood. Then what? These have to be changed. We are defending something called Hawiyat al-A'tidal. This identity that Jordan was built on. Yeah. This is what we are defending. I'm defending your right to do whatever you want. Since you mentioned the curriculum that our youth are all, whether private school or public school, uh, my son is in fourth grade. I read with him the Ministry of Education issued Arabic texts, and I noticed there's a lot of misogyny, gender discrimination. Still, I saw it recently, a story about a man who opens the door to a stranger and his wife is just a coffee getter, basically. And this is fourth grade oh, the, Arabic. That's, the, I'll show you the first uh, grade Arabic, where, where, whereby <laughs> the, the picture, the, the picture that, that settles into a ch child's mind is... Ahmed Yalab al Hadiqa, Ahmed is playing in the garden outside, and Rabab is cooking in the kitchen. This is the issue. Change them. This is the essence of everything mm. education. We worked a lot on it in the parliament. Education but again, we're two votes out of 130. It's so education, I mean, yani, ihna, we both, we're, we're, you and I, we come from the same, let's say, West Ammani kind of upbringing. Uh, we both went to private schools. Our children are unlikely to be enrolled in a public school unless so somehow they improve drastically. We're unlikely to go to a public hospital when we need to. Uh, we're unlikely to draw to get into a service. So, you know, all these are just facts. Uh, and that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. None of us, whether it's transport, health, education, we are. You know. It is correct. And then it's extremely dangerous because you live in a bubble. And this is the problem. This gap between... West Amman and the rest of Jordan is extremely dangerous. The bigger it gets, your children might not find a place in Jordan in a work atmosphere because they have to mingle with everyone from all classes. Everyone in this country. This gap has to be minimized. We have to push and minimize it. How do we minimize it? We minimize it by raising the standards of public education, raising the standards of public health. Because someone who lives in Eastern Amman, he's looking at someone who lives in Western Amman, well, he can go, he can do this, he can do that. This is, this is dangerous. We have to solve it. And this can only be solved when we start implementing social economy principles, whereby... The government has to invest more in the sector when it yeah. comes to education, transportation, and health. Because the more the gap is bigger, the less the middle class is disappearing. And that's a problem. Yes. You cannot sustain a country yeah. that way. Do you think uh, that Jordan has gone in the direction of the capitalist neoliberal path in terms of its fiscal policy and legislative policy uh, in the last couple of decades? Uh, because what I've noticed as a person who was born in 1980 lived in Jordan most of my life, the gap is growing. It's growing in most countries in the world, but the quality of services, public services, is going down big time. This is what's scary. 
Do you think if you improve at least education, forget health and transport for a moment, that it will transform the country in many ways? And why? Why is it be going in the wrong direction? It's been so many years. We are still following Nizam al-Rayai. We, we are still counting on uh, aid uh, from abroad, etc., etc. Which this is, is what's the, covering the, the budget. It's called the rentier economy. The rentier economy. Yeah. We have to move into the productive economy. I'm not against the, the private sector. We have to invest in the private sector. We have to give the private sector space to work. Why? Because the private sector will eventually, if it's strong and it can sustain, it will eventually create jobs. Instead of the public sector just creating jobs. Ahmad, 40%, and this is a scary percentage, 40% of our employment force that actually are employed, they work with the government. We're running in a vicious circle. In my opinion, many of them is hidden unemployment numbers. So you're hiding unemployment, you're just putting them in the, in the, yeah, yeah, in the yeah. public sector and saying, well, they're working. <laughs> Who's paying... For that, the budget, who's paying in the budget? Taxes. Uh, so I have to increase taxes in order to fund the salaries, etc. Rawatib taqa'udi, you're not only talking about current salaries, you're talking about rawatib taqa'udi. So you cannot have an economy just built on that model. What we have to do is break this vicious circle and start. Start by curriculums. Anna, I had this experience with uh, a relative, but very distant, and he came to my office. I'll just give you an example of how does education mix with, with what we're talking about, the, you wanting to just work in the public sector or not. So this guy comes to me with his father, and he was like, I'm a newly graduate. Can you help me wasta to work somewhere? And I said, well, um, it's against my principles to help you work in the public sector because I feel that if you work in the public sector, I'm just adding an extra salary on the budget. So this is against my principles. So what I'll try to do is I'll find you somewhere private. So I looked in a couple of banks where my friends are. I gave them their CV. So they agreed for him to work as a teller, 450 JDs a month. 13th, 14th salary, uh, uh, social security, in health insurance, perfect. One week later, the guy and his father comes back to my office. I thought they're coming back to thank me. So the young guy sits and he says the following, well, I don't like the job that I'm working at now. And I was like, why? You did business administration and you're working as a teller in a bank. And eventually, if you're good in your professional life, you can one day become a CEO. And the guy says, well, no. I thought I wanted to work in Hamman municipality. And I was like, why? They pay you less. You will go under the name of either cleaner or a supervisor that supervises certain shops if they have everything right. And he was like, yes, for two reasons. Uh, if I worked in Amman municipality, I'll go one day and five days I'll just sleep home, sleep in. And so that's one. And I was like, what's the other thing? It was the other thing that I can get money on the side. Corruption. This is an individual who is 23 years old, a fresh graduate of our universities in Jordan, of our schools, who's just starting his life thinking in that way. Yeah. That's the danger. How did we get to that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what you mean when you say muwatani. Is that the lack of muwatani also linked to that? Yes, the lack of... The, there's the, no social contract. He thinks, no social you know, the government is going to take care of me. Aslan, it has to take I'm not going to, Aslan, work properly. Yeah, uh, no, no, I don't need and to. And if I can get my way to the right spot, I can Unfortunately, sit back and there relax. Unfortunately, there are some, some of us who think that the government has to يعني, spend on him from the day he's born until the day he dies. Schools, transportation, health, I believe fully in them. It has to be given by any government to any citizen from the day he's born to the day he dies. That's a fact. I'm a social democrat when it comes to this uh, per se. But on the other side, the government is not responsible. It, it, the government is responsible in, in creating jobs. Not in the public sector. In the private sector. And how do we do that? By having legislative stability. And this is, was one of the things that I was talking about in the, in the parliament. I was saying we cannot change the tax law every two years because there are big companies in Jordan that came on a certain feasibility study to work for a certain amount of years. They, these people are organized. We cannot just change taxes whenever we want to change taxes. We cannot change laws whenever we want to change laws. That is, we have to give legislative stability for the private sector because these people will create jobs for us. 
and if they create enough jobs for us, the public sector will start to be with less employees in it, less people feeling the need to go there, so it makes it more efficient. Is improving education a big part of that, or is there anti-corruption tactics that can start slowly, chipping course, away? You need, you need a system of checks and balances, and this comes automatically with the civil state. It comes automatically mm. with the rule of law. It comes automatically with the citizenship, المواطنة. it comes automatically with changing the curriculums. It is the whole mental state of us in Jordan. It becomes different the closer we move towards the civil state. Mm. And this is how we can shift gradually. I feel like, sadly, that recently, in the last couple of years, there has been a, a drop in a belief, like a positive, optimistic outlook on Jordan by regular people. It's anecdotal. I haven't done any surveys. There is sort of, like you mentioned, that guy who, who was looking for work. He just already resigned to a, a path that is just not merit-based, Aslan. People who uh, who throw garbage out their window in the car as if it's like you know, no, trashing as if the street. The, let, let us ah, say it clearly, as ah. if they live in a hotel. Yeah, I mean, this mistrust or lack of empathy, lack of muatani, I don't know what you want to call it. It goes from top to bottom. They're aware that municipal employees, and I can attest to it, that they take bribes. We've had some in municipal employees take stuff. Not all of them, maybe just... Ta- it's few. Yeah, ta- ta- take stuff from our <laughs> gift shop here. On the Enter, they're like, oh, this is nice. Uh, three uh, municipal guys with the badges. I'm going to take this. Kaza. While they were threatening to uh, give out a warning or a, or a penalty for some infraction that's not really there. Uh, customs. We've had to... Our clearing agent told me that the customs official wants... 150 GDs to kind of like look the other way on something that's actually not even real. We had to do it. I even wrote it down. Ikramiyat Muwadhaf Jumruk. I added it in my books. Fi Ikramiyat Muwadhaf Jumruk. What does that mean? I was asked to pay someone. Otherwise, I will lose my, my business deal. And I had to do it. And I know so many business people that tell me crazy stories with Al Jamari Customs, with Town Al Amani, with Wazarat Al Saha, the Ministry of Health on restaurants that they've been bribed all the time. And I tell them, man, as, as a naive, new, new arrival from, from the U.S. and England where I studied, man, why don't you talk to a journalist? Man, this is crazy. Bully, man, are you crazy? <laughs> I have business running a business. I, I don't want to I don't want to have this issue. And then when you hear a few months ago about those thugs that that kind of uh, try. Have you ever seen those thugs that that are were in the news recently? How they how they behave downtown? I couldn't believe it. I saw it with my own eyes once yeah, no, where people. Nice. In, in the Aswaq al shabiyad in the middle of downtown where people have their clothing hang for sale, they would come and kick down all the stands and they would start screaming at everybody and asking for money. I couldn't believe I asked someone, what, what are these guys doing? And they're like, oh, these guys, they, they literally collect from these guys. I'm like, man, oh, racketeering. We're, we're racketeering, we're, but we're, in down, we're not in a refugee camp, you know, two hours away. We are in downtown. Yani Sahat Taraghadan is... Is a minute to 10 minutes walk. Wow, this is, this is really blatant. Uh, and then you hear about people buying election votes. I mean, talking about where some candidates run and they, they, they ask people to vote for them in uh, ways that are not uh, straightforward. Pay the money. How can we, as citizens, that we want Jordan to be better for our children uh, to grow and to of live course, and have um, the chance we had, even and better than our chance? How can we reverse this? I mean, this is a huge question. But do you feel there's this, this erosion is there and is it and it's going in the wrong direction? I feel every, every, every politician in Jordan, and even if you if you followed up um, the uh, His Majesty King Abdullah's speech in the opening of the parliament, he said something about re-establishing the trust between the uh, citizens and uh, the government, the governmental institutions, uh, not only the governmental institution, I'm talking about parliament, government, uh, everything. Um, why? Because everyone feels what you exactly feel now. There is some kind of mistrust between the people and the governmental institutions. Not mistrust, just mistrust. They just feel that, for example, I used to sit with youth. And they used to tell me, why are we paying taxes? And I was like, because it's an obligation, usually in every country, and you go to Germany, go to Kaza, you pay taxes. And they were like, well, there they get something in return. Here, and again, we're talking someone who's like you. His answer was, my children are in a private school. If I get sick, I go to a private hospital. 
I drive my own car. So what am I getting in return for paying the taxes? This is a question that the youth is asking. And what you have to do is rebuild this trust. Because the minute when you rebuild this trust, they will feel home. They will stop throwing garbage in the streets. They will gradually start feeling that, yes, I have to pay taxes because it's a national duty. Well, we can argue a lot about the amount of... I was one of the people who was against the, the, the tax law because I thought that it's uh, adding more burden on the middle class and pushing the middle class towards becoming the poor class as well and, and uh, just eroding the middle class. Um, so these are all correct questions that now in Jordan we are facing. These are solved usually by, oh, well, she, you need to start with a political reform. The political reform is the mother of all reforms because it creates a system of checks and balances. So don't tell me I just want to do an educational reform or an economic reform without having an actual political reform or start with a political reform. We have to start. This is the first step. Let's have political parties. Let's have real programs. Let such political parties produce MPs in the parliament. The majority forms a government. And then if you as a political party became the prime minister, you did not act on what you have promised, then the people will choose another political party maybe in the future to become, for him to become. It's normal. Where, where are these political parties today? We don't. We have 50, 52 parties. Registered parties. Except for two or three maybe. The others are, are, are just, for me, supermarkets. And that's mm. the problem. It's just for someone to get to a position or for someone to be seen. What can the government do, the, the executive branch of the government, His Majesty and all the way down? What can they do to just, or, or, or are we to assume, like most people in the street assume, that the government... Uh, likes the status quo of weak parties that actually most citizens aren't even members of. And if you go to the U.S., which is not the best example as a democracy, but most people are registered in a party. And we both know that if government in Jordan doesn't want something, they will find a way to keep it undone. Is that what we're facing in Jordan? Or is it just a lack of uh, activism a, from people I'm like a, you? No, I tell you, that's part. But that's not the whole story. Of course, there is a certain current in Jordan that wants things to remain as is. So you see the explanatory notes of His Majesty the King. Um, you say, well, we're working on them. There is a certain a group, a certain current that does not want. That's one. Mm. The second is that from 1989, before that, there was this belonging to a political party was extremely dangerous. So... Because I faced it personally when I started with the Tahalif al-Madani. A lot of the youth, they come, they are very excited. Yes, I want to participate in the party. The minute his father knows or his mother knows, what? You've registered in a political party, get out of it. What are you doing, etc. Why? Because as well, these people are still living in the mental state of pre-89. Uh, so the youth... He sees his father, his mother, get out, you cannot, don't go to politics, Khalas, go to your work. This is part. The other part is the actual parties themselves. The actual parties themselves. Some part of them did not change the rhetoric since 1960. <laughs> they're still using the same rhetoric, and therefore youth are not interested in that rhetoric. Uh, they're not giving something new. So, so a lot of the youth think that, well, what I'm, 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 I'm going into this political party. What's the programs? What am I going to do? Or I'm a, Am I just getting into this party just for X person to become a general secretary or to become a minister or to become an MP at one day? It's a complex issue. That is not, you cannot just say it's the fault of the government or it's the fault of the political parties or it's the fault of X or Y. It's a mixture. Go back to the curriculums. Yeah, and probably this is the first time I'm going to say this, but as people, we did not learn democracy uh, in your house. When probably a lot of us Jordanians, the father figure is everything. He says yes, he says no, you do this, you do that. You go to school, the teacher is the figure. Yeah, yeah. You cannot do this, you do that. Ta'lim talqini, mish tafa'uli. What I'm saying is what you have to memorize. That is it, don't think. We have to understand, to listen to each other. Yeah. Even when I, when I was in the parliament, when I used to see these fights between MPs. Under yeah. The, it's, it's the parliament. <laughs> 
It's the symbol of, of democracy, Andrew, and we're fighting because what? Because we cannot talk. Mm. This you is were... all embedded in the curriculums. We have to embed it the in the curriculums. Hello, the chicken or the egg? Can you fix the curriculum without political reform where you have parties and programs and, and research and, and platforms? Uh, yani, what, what would you do right now if, let's say even if His Majesty, with you and a group of people, he told you, listen, we're starting a party. Are you, Qais, still interested after this recently the election where your uh, list did not succeed? Are you interested in taking this forward? Because me as a liberal, I've been hearing a lot of things about the liberal, civil whatever you want to call it, parties that have been trying to come up, whether it's from uh, former government appointees like Mathan Marwan Ma'ashir many years ago, I heard from a jalsa there was like issue, you know, oh, let's start this thing or from Taqaddam, the, you know, that, that Rabita. Yeah, we were together. You know, uh, there's so many, like a lot of people, even with uh, Dr. Omar Razaz before, you know, he started Jordan Strategy Forum to kind of have a, a legislative pressure to improve laws for private sector. You know, there's so many things from all angles. And, but give me a party. Anna, yani, and give not just me who, who's interested, to the non-interested, my neighbor who doesn't care, who just wants to pour his vote into something. You know, give us, where is this? Are you interested in, in taking um, this forward? Look, uh, I think what we had as a civil movement is liberals in Jordan. We had a setback in the elections. We all admit to that. And that setback as well, we have to look at our own mistakes. Why were the results not so good for the civil movement in general, especially in Amman District 3, where it is the stronghold of our movements? Yani we all are here. Three main reasons. Number one, Corona. A lot of our voters were scared of actually going and voting. They read a lot, they're intellectuals, and they say, well, why would I go and vote? Yani it's dangerous. And I have my father is 60, 70, 80 years old. Why am I going to go vote? True, my parents did Jeopardize not Jeopardize them. Yeah, my parents Usually maybe vote. your parents last time voted for man. This time they didn't vote. So minus two votes, for example. Yeah. So Corona had a, had a devastating effect. Why? Because... Basically, people who who bought votes that were the ones who actually went and voted, and the others did not. So, Corona, black money, people buying votes, Ma'an, the civil movement, we don't do that. We don't believe in that. Even if we had the capacity, we wouldn't do it. This is exploiting people's hunger and, and stealing their free will of voting to someone, and that's dangerous. So, these are the two main reasons. And the third main reason is that we were maybe not able in the last four years to produce a real political party for people, for them to feel involved. So that was our mistake, maybe. We started with the Civil Alliance Party. It was us, it was Dr. Marwan Al-Mashar, it was a lot of us in the party. For some reason, it did not pick up and work, for a lot of reasons. And therefore, I think what we had was a setback. A lot of our crowd were saying, well, where is the civil uh, state? We voted for you four years ago. Where is it now? So you try and explain. Well, wait. We abolished Article 308 of the, the rape, penal code, the, the rape the, thing. The rape law, yeah. We tried to increase the age of uh, marriage. We uh, uh, abolished uh, the article that uh, used to give a leeway for the person who kills his sister or his mother or his wife on base honor killings. We abolished that as well. So, so now someone who kills on the basis of honor killings is going to go to jail for 15 years uh, instead of six months. So we did a lot within our capacity as two MPs out of 130. We used to explain this to people. Ya jama'a, when we won the first time, we did not have majority. Maybe you thought we had majority because we had the higher votes in Amman, but the electoral law only let two of us to get into the parliament. We were facing an alliance of conservatives and Islamists who usually align together on such matters. Who aligned against us when we tried to increase the uh, marriage age from 16 to 18. Uh, by law, a female cannot open a bank account, cannot obtain a driving license because she's 16, yet she can sign a marriage contract and, and establish a family. That You cannot have that in this century. The bloc that work against us, conservatives slash Islamists from the bloc, we are two against 130. We failed. So we're telling people that what we have to do is increase the amount of people who believe in this to be represented in the parliament. Maybe next time we'll have 10 MPs. The time after we'll have 20, etc. And we'll go gradually. But we have to start somewhere. We cannot give up. We love this country. So we will fight back. 
We had a setback this time. That's fine. Next time, Ahmad will work together on a bigger group. We'll go and call people. Those people who think that there's no point of the parliament, there is a point in the parliament. There are certain laws and regulations that you can change. We were able to change. Now with this parliament, there is no pro progressive voices, by the way, because a lot of our people did not go and vote. Hala, Amman's third district, which you're, you were running in, and you ran, ran last time and you represented, is kind of like the bellwether for policy direction because every other district in Jordan is tribal I based. agree totally. The oh. third district of Amman is, is non-tribal because it, first of all, it disproportionately has a lot of voters, yet the, the makeup is mixed, very mixed, because it's, it's not a tribal base. It's like, the Fusay uh, Fisa of Jordan. Exactly. You have tribes. Every family in Jordan, you have, you have the original Palestinian, the original Jordanian, the Circassian, the Christian. The, it, it's a mix. Yeah. Amman District 3 represents the pulse of the politics. Yeah. Is there really no hope for reform? What can we do now from outside the parliament? I think what we definitely have to do is organize ourselves in a big movement that can eventually turn into a real political party and be ready for the next elections to put in the parliament at least 10 MPs who believe in what we believe, because this is when we will start change. We cannot start change only from the outside. We have to be in the game also to start change. There's a strong idea in the Jordanian state that, well, it's not time for political reform. People are hungry. People don't care about politics. Don't, don't, don't. We can work simultaneously on political reform, gradual political reform. So I will not be misunderstood, gradual political reform. Yani today, if you say, let's do political reform, let's have a government made from the parliament or the ex-parliament, the, the parliament before which I was part of, I would say no. The parliament at that point was not ready. There is no blocks, real blocks. There is no real programs. You had 130 MPs, each from a different background, each with a different idea. Some who came to for services, some who came for gaining more uh, money, others who came for... Right? So what you have to do is start bottom up, bottom, gathering youth, establishing a political party, a real political party, a programmatic political party. And I'm not saying just an ideological one that is in the opposition or not. No. What we need is a political party that puts in programs for environment, for health. And we'll have experts from people who believe in our principles as a party they can come in and they can they're not there's it's not a necessity for them necessity for them to to be uh, politicians they can draft programs so you can have the economist you can have the environmentalist you can have the engineer you can these programs in the next elections are the one we give the public so we say i'm not just running because i'm Qais Zayedin and my uh, eyes are brown <laughs> uh, vote for me vote for the program mm -hmm. Vote because I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. This way, when we get into the parliament as 10 MPs, these 10 are a real block. Why? We have a program, and this program is for the state, it's not for us. So we have experts that told us how to deal with the environment. How to, so if at any point we are in the government, we have a strategy. We have something in our hands. I said it in the parliament several times, and that's very important. And I used to tell the prime minister, Omar Razaz, I was telling him, eight ministers for transportation in three years. Why? Why did that person get in and why did he leave? We are entitled to know. Why? Yeah, someone comes in three months, the other comes after three months. I'm not saying they're bad. They are experts in what they do. That's not the question. They are individuals at the end of the day. They have no programs. Qais becomes a prime minister. Well, Ahmad is a great guy. He's really a great guy. He's excellent in what he does. What about becoming a minister of labor? Ahmad, okay. Ahmad comes in as a minister of labor. Ahmad can be brilliant in this area or line. But at the end of the day, Ahmad, you came yesterday, today you're a minister. Immediately, and I tell you, you will drown in Wastat. Your cousins will start calling you, yeah, Habib, you want to transfer this from here to there. You will, you will drown in your own bureaucracy. Four months, you wake up, and well, خلص, I don't want you, I'll bring someone else. Is this also the case for the prime ministership itself? From my generation, we always feel like it's the, the prime minister is appointed, and it's a very delicate choice because it has to please. المخابرات والعشائر و و و و و 
And usually the average from two to five years, I don't know the average number of years, maybe less, all the negativity in the media is just injected into this prime ministership because Jordan has relative freedom of speech, but it, it has a ceiling, of course, uh, and, and therefore the highest you can really uh, criticize is the, is the prime minister. And then once the prime minister's plate is f- bloated with criticism, he is ushered out and the fresh, sometimes not fresh, sometimes a shuffle comes back in. Mm-hmm. And OK, let's now feed this. I, I, I feel like my generation, part of the, the lack of yani, uh, interest, uh, interest in, politics. in politics is because this is how it is. Now we have a fresh government. We have a new labor uh, minister. We have a new this and that. Now the cycle of Jordan. People who care about politics, they will go on Twitter and Facebook and among themselves and they will start criticizing all the things gradually. Uh, sometimes it takes two years, sometimes it takes four years, depending how crazy the economic situation is. And the government from maybe through, through his majesty or whoever would be like, OK, yeah, let's switch it out. And like you said, whoever comes in is usually a good guy. But the program is not continuous. No, there's, there's, there's no, no program. The problem is, you know, when I was saying exactly about the transportation minister for it, this is why political parties are important. Why? Because they give you strategies. And yes. it is time for us in Jordan to look at something and say, well, we have to have a strategy that bypasses governments. A, a, a strategy, Again, who benefits? Because clearly, if you're an economist or if you're a, a person who, who, who tries to understand Jordan and loves Jordan, you realize this is bad. For It's like having a CEO of a company come in uh, just, because, just because he has a nice CV. But then he doesn't have a program. He doesn't care what the guy before him did. He has a pile of, uh, of bullshit in front of him. And yes, he's going to so get switched when, when, the heat, when the heat goes done. up, he's switched. Exactly. But how is the company ever going to make money? It's going to be a loser. Like Jordan is always deficit. Always. I've never seen Jordan having a great we need year. To, Anjad, we need to have long-term, <laughs> we need to have long-term yeah. strategies. And that is directly linked with the fact of having political parties, with the fact of making the collective mind move give you a collective mind sometimes today and I need the youth the youth they are smart they, they, I mean they're, they're different they have these ideas where am I going to give them the platforms to put these ideas for Jordan and I know a guy he's a very good friend of mine he's brilliant in economics he always writes these articles and then he writes the articles 300 400 likes excellent great article man perfect and then out people forget type Someone like him can be in a political party, can be in the economical section of the political party. He can draft real programs with other people like him. So when you have a a political party, you're basically, what is a political party? You're providing a platform for people to sit and think together, not on your own. Sometimes some, some of the youth, they come to me and they say, what do you think of us having in Jordan? Don't we have to have a prime minister who's 30? I'm like, no. And they're like, well, I'm like, what, what's the, the age is not the question. Yeah. They're like, look abroad. So I say the following. Yeah, For example, in Austria, yes, I understand. She's 32. The prime minister. The prime minister mm. or 34. But she has been in a political party since she was 13. She has been built to get into that position. Once she's in that position, she's not on her own. She has a machine working behind her. She's, she might be just the face of it. There's a machine with strategists, researchers, etc. A machine that's been built. Has this happened in any Arab country? What? This kind of uh, political growth where the party is the engine uh, behind uh, a, a group of... of, of I don't know, because, because... In Lebanon, you have... Eth- it's ethnic. It's, it's ethnic it's parties. Doesn't matter. In, other Arab, Egypt, let's in, say. in other Arab states, it's, it's, it's the one-party policy. So it's yeah. autocracy. I mean, and Egypt tried enough. after the Arab Spring. Nah, it was not mature enough. You know, yeah. Because the Islamists, they always isn't, ride Isn't kind of that what will happen? I mean, this is an old question, and it's kind of a cliche. Oh, if you let Jordanians uh, full democracy and full uh, political freedom, the Islamists are going to win because they have the shortcut. It's like, oh, we have this Hayy Sharia, Ahlaha. It's been around. It's holy. Rabbna li yani kamara tabha. But let's actually uh, let's that's just correct. Let's, it's a shortcut to get people to vote, and therefore isn't and isn't they're that the strongest and they're yeah. the most organized. Yeah. And this is why when I use the term of political reform as Qais, yeah, I use gradual political reform. Yes. Why? Because yeah, Ammi, the Islamists 
since 1970, they had all the doors open. I remember when people like my grandfather were probably in jail, the Islam, because he was a leftist communist, and the Islamists were running around in jail freely. So what I'm saying is, you cannot have political reform tomorrow because probably they will be the ones immediate. Yeah. Uh, because they have the money, they have the power, they yeah. have the ideology, they are organized, they've been there since 1970, yeah. the curriculums, they, they did have, it. They have foreign they have, alliances they have, well. a, they have foreign alliances abroad. Yeah. Type. What we're saying is, okay, but let us, as a civil movement, civil community, let us establish our own thing now. Maybe in four years, we will be strong enough to compete in elections with them, and then it's no longer this idea of it's either the Islamists or no one. We have to start in that path. That is the path that will involve the youth. Yeah. That is the path that will let the youth feel that I belong here. A lot of them don't have that feeling. They're leaving. Uh, the other part think that his relationship with Jordan is just the government has to give me everything to stay. I mean, otherwise, I'll leave. So a lot of people treat Jordan like a hotel, unfortunately. And we have to stop, re-examine, see where we are and say, yalla, let's move forward. Let's have a productive economy. Let's have a gradual political reform. And we have to start. We should have started way before. Countries are not built on the ansuriya, and the ta'ifiya, and the qabaliya. Countries are built on muatani, adali, ishtimaiya, musawa, hurriyat. This is how you build a country. I always tell the youth, look, the main thing in the civil society, in the civil in a civil state democracy is that the relationship between an individual and the state is a legal relationship. It is governed by the constitution, by the laws and regulations, not a religious relationship, nor a tribal relationship. So you cannot come and tell me, well, you cannot wear shorts and walk in Rainbow Street. Why? Because it's against the traditions. It's not the law. You cannot tell me that. This is a personal freedom. And this is why I had a couple of things before elections that I was really attacked on. The uh, Jarash incident, the pool party or whatever that was in uh. Jarash. That was the only person probably in the whole government that said, well, يعني, you cannot say that this is against traditions because this is a private place. Yeah, there's no the, the, burden the, on the private the, citizen to be traditional. Exactly. Inside the, on, the only thing that you can say that there were more than 20 and we are in Corona so. and therefore they are in breach of one, two, three. This is a civil state. But you cannot tell me, and you are breach of... Absolutely. Ma, 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 how did the, Listen, the thing come out? You are in breach of one, two, three, and the traditions. Bizarre. <laughs> this, is, this is why I'm always saddened, and it's always a joke to us who, who notice these things. Most people don't notice it that much, where there's this flaw. It's no longer a civil state behavior when the government... Attacked. Yeah, the government, it, like, actually, I, it's funny you mentioned this case because I mentioned it when it came out to my friends. I'm like, it's so funny. The only infraction here is the limit breach of people. That's of people. Anything else? It's not. There's no infraction. Why? Why inject it? I've always felt that the government, this goes back all the way to the early 2000s when His Majesty was new as our king in Jordan, and, and there were a lot of gender laws being proposed uh, in the, as a temporary laws that weren't actually ratified for a long time, uh, the days of maybe even Ali Abu Raghib's mm -hmm. prime ministership. There's always the apologetic tone to as if bring the people to our side, the government will try to pretend, or maybe it's true, that we are with you in terms of our conservativeness and our conservative values to kind of gain brownie points. And this is always something I've noticed, brownie points with the conservatives. And this is something that's innate in many conservative cultures where people think that their own limits in terms of their social values have to be the limits in the whole country. This is, this, this is part of democracy, yeah, but yeah. it's dangerous because we have minorities uh, that don't agree with it's, certain it's not, things. It's, it's, not, have, it's not the idea I'm of just minorities. Here, and I, I used to say it, and I said it, I'm going to say it in Arabic. لا يجوز على فريق معين سياسي أن يفرض وصاية الأخلاقية على المجتمع بأكمله لأن الأخلاق تختلف. مفهوم الأخلاق مفهوم نسبي يختلف من, من أخ لأخوه. صح. فما بيصير. I cannot come and impose my set of rules and regulations that I believe in on you. And this is 
وات ام سكيرد اوف ليش انا بالانتخابات شوي خليني احكي عربي شوي ليش كنت بالانتخابات انا عم بحكي على هويه الاعتدال وسندافع عن هويه الاعتدال التي اسست عليها المملكه الاردنيه الهاشميه لانه something از جوينج رونج من ايام مسلسل جن انا ما بدافع عنه ولا بتفرق معي ادافع عنه لكن انا بحكيها انا مع حقهم مش عاجبك لا تحضر غير القناة ممنوع تفرض وصايتك الأخلاقية علي هون بلشت الخطورة بتمشي قصة مزرعة yeah. جرش in between yeah. قصص كتير حفلات that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that actually people were arrested there is a fear though and you're just to translate for those who don't speak Arabic there is this whole imposing my social standards and behavioral standards on others and it's used in politics a lot and they use it all over the Arab world And then the gin you mentioned, the, the, the Netflix Jordanian show gin, where it showed a girl uh, having a What, an innocent I, kiss. I, yeah. I, I, as a person, I might not agree with it, but I don't have the right to stop you from watching. Yeah. Or to stop us from producing content. Like Or this. to do this. Yeah. The actors, I remember, yani, they, they were scared in the, in the first two, three weeks to, to, to go on the street. There, there is a certain, and I agree with you on something that you said, Fee, Sometimes there is this competition, I feel, between the government and the Islamists and the conservatives to show who's more conservative and, and that cannot be done in Jordan. Anna, the relationship is legal. And then we go back to square one curriculums. Mm. Why is this happening? Why do I think that I have to please these people and therefore raise the bar on certain issues? What my curriculums produced. Faddal. 30 years ago, was it a question if it is okay for me to say Merry Christmas for, for, for a fellow citizen who happens to be Christian in Jordan? It wasn't. Today, it's a question every time. Imagine. So we're going in a way or another backwards. Yeah. In this sense. Yeah. So when I used to say, sometimes I feel my fight is not just political yeah. reform. It's not just معركتي ثقافية اجتماعية. to protect our children to live yeah, yeah. in the future in this country and to live as in the manner that they deem fit. Yeah. Because if today something like jinn we skip over it, something like jarash we skip over it, okay, wait yeah. and see. Yeah, it's going to get gradual. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to your personal rights. Yeah, yeah. And that's why many people leave in that. Who and can this leave, is why we were telling people, yeah, I'm going to go and vote. Even if you don't like Qais personally, you don't like X person, we have this problem in Jordan, I don't like a person, personally, I don't want to vote. Yeah. I mean, vote for the idea. But there's no party, man. There's vote no party. for the idea. At least man was yeah. a movement. Yeah, it was. At least our voices under the yeah. parliament were there. Yeah. You remember when one of these singers did this thing in the public schools, a song against bullying. And I remember I was in the parliament, two MPs from the Islamic Front. They immediately wrote to Amr Razaz, he is teaching our uh, <laughs> youngsters to dance in schools and this is against and against and against. And the government responded and they stopped it. So I was under that and I said, why do yeah, you yeah. stop it? He is singing against bullying in public schools. Yeah. That is a good step forward. But yeah, they stopped yeah. the whole program. Why? Because, the, um, so they give you this just to mm. not... antagonize people or, yeah, or, or yeah. agitate them and because the whole economical situation is bad, etc. is bad. Mm. So they need to, to show people that they are protecting something which is conservatism. Yeah. Do you feel that stability is the government's number one goal ahead of anything else in terms of reform? That's yes, what I feel definitely. because stability comes it's first. all calculations. <laughs> Uh, there's a balance they have to do. The Ajloon, all these incidents we mentioned, there's always like, I feel like there's a political calculation where stability is the primary thing. And after the Arab Spring, we noticed there's a lot of instability in the Arab world. And Jordan is basically, we are just trying to survive as we are. Uh, sadly, the rentier state, the uh, Rawi is going to continue. And it doesn't matter. The powers that be, uh, yes, they, of course, we all love Jordan, whether you're a minister or and whether you're head of... there's a lot of positives uh, in Jordan. Yeah, I, I don't know. want to sound... Yeah, <laughs> Even pessimistic. the corrupt people, some of them uh, might actually love Jordan. But uh, I feel like we are resigned to stability ahead of everything else, not even risking 
بوليتيكال ريفورمز ذير از تايم يا عماد ان هيستوري ميبي ان 10 ييرز 20 ييرز وي ويل لوك باك اند سي وي شود هاف ستارتد اي انديرستاند ذات ذا ستيت ناو سيز نمبر 1 ستابيليتي نمبر 2 ايكونوميكال ريفورم اند ذا فار نمبر 3 بوليتيكال ريفورم ذس از هاو ثينجز ار سين اي ام وذ ستابيليتي يعني جوردن is a safe haven at least when you look in jordan electricity you get it clean water you have yeah. uh, internet, safety internet uh, yeah. etc we have a lot and we managed to keep this a lot so this is a positive thing but that doesn't mean that we have to sit back and just watch it and say well we've done this so خلاص no, we have to keep moving forward we have to keep pushing forward we have economical problems we have to solve them We have corruption, we have to find a way. And for me, al-fasad al-idari is more dangerous than the al-fasad al-mali al-basir. Al-fasad al-idari is appointing someone who's not right in a not right position. Yeah. This has to be solved. So I think al-mustaqbal mushriq. We have to fight for it. And it's coming from someone like me who just lost elections, but I'm, I still say we're still young and this is our country and we have to push forward and we have to defend what is ours. بمفهوم هوية الاعتدال we have to continue fighting okay. the, the, the identity of moderation that Jordan was built on this has to be kept and what you said is true sometimes you feel that the government and the Islamists are competing who's more protective over our uh, personal lives and that cannot be but that, why is that? because there is this perception that 90% of Jordanians are like that the question number one is it really true that 90% are like that or is mm. it just The high voices that are coming out every now and then, yeah. the organized ones. When Ma'an went into elections in 2016, yeah, Ahmad, people thought 90% is like that, so we will fail. Obviously not. In 2016, we got higher than the Islamists in Amman District mm. 3. And that means that there's a lot of people who believe in moderation. They're just not going out. They're not talking over Facebook, over social mm. media. So that's one. The other is go back to the curriculums and let's solve it. in order to gradually move forward into the modernization of our country. So Qais, يعني, I want to ask you, so you're a long-time lawyer. Are you now able to jump back into your profession and deal in commercial and corporate law? And how much of your time will be spent on expanding the platform that you believe in, that you're so passionate about? I always believe that if you want to ever be a good politician, You always have to have your own economic stability that doesn't come from any governmental job. Because the minute it comes from a governmental job, you no longer have your political independence. Mm. And this is why I believe that I have to continue doing what I do as a corporate commercial lawyer in Jordan. Because this is my source of income. This is how I live. And I have to continue working politically and expanding this movement and maybe finding a vehicle. This vehicle can be a political party if the whole الأوضاع مناسبة it can be a political party. If not, it can be a movement. And a movement uh, is usually less uh, يعني you're not fully committed to this thing and therefore you're Uh, you feel more confident and more safe to join a movement than probably in Jordan join a political party. So the question that I'm, I'm looking in deep and reflecting back on now is that we have a lot of people around us and uh, the amount of youth that called me after the elections, the amount uh, that, that actually cried when we lost as, as a man, not because of us, because of they thought that that's the end. Yani, خلص, they have to leave the country. <laughs> There was a lot of them. And for them, I think we have to continue. But we just have to find the right vehicle. You need a vehicle to move from A to B. Okay. You cannot just be an individual working on that. Yeah. No, it has to have a, an, a platform. Do you feel like it has cross uh, ideological uh, reach? For example, I know a lot of people that are very conservative, uh, religious, and they are not very political, but they're drawn to Muslim Brotherhood concepts in general. But at the same time, they constantly complain about lack of uh, quality uh, public uh, services and corruption, constantly. Those two, the grievances are across the board with 90%, maybe more, of okay. Jordanians. It's a big platform in terms of I accept you, you accept me. We can, we yeah. can have certain differences on a lot of issues, especially uh, foreign politics. Me and you might be more pro-Palestinian in our ideas. Others may be more realistic in, in, in what they call for, etc. But when it comes to, the, to what 
we agree on, mm. it's more than what we disagree on. In Jordan, Anna, because I've been, and I remember from my grandfather's time, most of the political parties, they have to agree 100% on everything. <laughs> but the civil movement is saying that I don't need to agree with Imad on 100%. It's fine with me if I agree with him on 51 plus percent of issues. Mm. That creates a solid common ground between me and Well, I don't know if that's possible. Look at the U.S. in the South, where it's more conservative Republican. The majority would benefit from a left wing, like a Bernie Sanders style Medicare for all Mm. program, where healthcare becomes free, where they'll get better benefits. But let's say Bernie Sanders is pro gay rights and they can't. You you lost them. For uh, even though because it's better this for them. is this is for them is more important than that, or at least in the media it becomes a red line. Of course, Maho, Here they, the they create that it's a red line. It, it, it might not be a big a big issue. And yani, for today, yani, and I was asked this at, at, at one point. I remember uh, an MP, an Islamist MP, looked at me and were like, "You support uh, gay rights? Do you support gay rights?" And I was like, "I don't think this is an important issue at this point for you to ask me." <laughs> there is hunger. There is unemployment. There is 300,000 other issues for you to ask me if I'm with or not. And that was the end of that. Yeah. Without answering yes or no, of course. But it is how you make things look. And how they try, yes, with Bernie Sanders. But I tell you what, the Democratic Party in the United States, look at them. You have Bernie Sanders and you have Biden or Hillary Clinton or Obama. So you have the slightly to the right and you have the left. But they're both in the same party at the end of the day. Yani, Yes, there are differences, but look at Jeremy Corbyn style, Tony Blair, the Labour Party. So we could establish a vehicle in Jordan where we could have a Tony Blair style and a Jeremy Corbyn style, yet they agree on 51% of things and they will work in that direction. That's normal. Mm -hmm. But we have to learn how to accept each other and how to accept democracy within us. Because if we are calling for government, the country, to be a civil state, we have to be civil in our own vehicle. In our own vehicle. I have to accept your opinion, you have to accept my opinion, and then if we disagree, we go to voting. You accept the results of the vote, I accept the results of the vote. This is how we establish a democratic model within our own vehicle before we start asking even the government to do it, because we have to practice within our own vehicle. And this is why I'm, I'm not against having, we don't have the perk of having a liberal party and a social democratic party. And we're still not even there. We're, we're still steps behind. So I think people who believe in this have to unite for the time being. And maybe in 30, 40 years, when we have a real Lada, we can have a liberal party on its own and a social democratic party like Lib Dems in the United, in the United Kingdom and the Labour Party. Fine. But at this point, we have no choice but to unite. Because when it comes to modernization, when it comes to defending the identity of moderation, we are on the same boat. Would you run again in four years? I will. I hope so. If Allah Ta'ala Umar is going to rule. But uh, I'm planning and I'm planning for Ma'an or for the movement, whether it was called Ma'an at that point or not. The whole Tayyar Madani to have lists in more than one place. Because from this election, a lot of people in Madaba, a lot of people in Karak, in Ma'an, they were, they were saying, like, do you have so, a list there? So why not? Definitely. You can find uh, allies in all districts. Exactly. And they might have a better chance of uh, representing. Yeah. Even if we personally lost this, at least you would have maybe others who have won in other parts. Thank you, Ahmad. And it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so much for coming. It's been a great and, uh, I'm really time proud of flew you. by, actually. Time did fly. It's been amazing. We could spend another hour oh, and a half. Uh, we still haven't gone into any uh, foreign hardcore issues, for hardcore, if I will keep it at that. But thanks for coming. Thank I'm really you. proud of you. And I hope you continue because you're very passionate about what you do. Thank you. Habibi. Habib Albi. Pleasure.